one more question, and maybe John, it's to you as well. I notice that uh, transgenderism comes after gay rights liberation. Uh, you've got LGB, and then you've got T. Yeah. And the thing I'm wondering is whether or not the uh, rebellion against convention, which is the liberation of gay people from homophobic suppression, a legitimate, I mean, my son Glenn is a gay man. I'm for the liberation of gay people to live as they would choose to live, et cetera. If it needs to be said. I'm not questioning that in the least. What I'm asking is whether or not there's a political connection between the revulsion at normal normality and conventionality being imposed on people with respect to their sexuality and that same conventional, normal, quote unquote, normal, uh, conservative, socially with a small c, uh, being imposed upon people with respect to their gender identity. Uh, and I just wonder if you would comment on that. The connection between the movements. Or? Yeah, well, it's, it's to anybody who wants okay. to respond, but it, mainly to you since you are a uh, yeah. guest of honor. The, um, I, as a matter of fact, I mentioned in the book that I have never understood why LGB and T and the rest of the alphabet are grouped together. Um, and there, there is a, recogni a recognition among many people in the gay community that transgender ideology is not necessarily in alliance with them. For, for to take the obvious example, um, we now, there's a consensus that has emerged, and I think it seems to be a scientific consensus too. It seems to have an objective basis in genetics that homosexuality is heritable uh, to some degree. In any case, there seems to be a genetic basis for it's, it's obvious, yeah. sexuality. Uh, in other words, it's not something chosen. If you believe that a man becomes a woman by the sincere belief that he's a woman, then homosexuality is chosen. Um, you, you have to decide to remain what you are by birth or change it and suddenly be engaged in heterosexual relationships. Uh, and by heterosexual, I mean you're now what you claim to be, therefore you're formally gay relationship becomes straight. Um, and there's also the, the issue, and this is a, a much more serious issue, of what, what leads people, what leads children, to go back to Glenn's point earlier, what leads children to decide that they are living in the wrong body, that, they, that there is a mismatch between who they are internally and what their biology is representing? And many times the answer is attraction to the same sex. Um, there's a, a British journalist, Helen Joyce, who's written for The Economist, who's, who's pointed out that many of the people who uh, identify now as transgender, many of the children who identify as transgender, in the past would have just been gay children. But now you're giving many of them the option to change their anatomy so that they are, in effect, not gay. And that is really problematic. It, it, there's problems on the other end, too. Does uh, Andrew Sullivan has, uh, uh, has written about this. Um, he said, does the fact that I prefer a penis to a vagina in my sexual attractions, um, does that make me a bigot? if I'm not attracted to transgender people who are called transgender women, because they, I'm sorry, does that make me a bigot if I'm not attracted to women who believe themselves men because they lack a penis? Uh, and it's a, I don't know that that, that problem is solvable. Uh, that's why I really do question whether or not L, G, and B, which are sexual orientations, should be matched up with everything that follows T, which are sexual identities. Well, here's my simple-minded response to that. It's political. It's 
the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Yeah. The enemy being cis heteronormativity. Yeah. And that's what we're against. We who are the QITQIA and we who are the LGBT, LGB, we're against cis heteronormativity. And hence we find ourselves in the same, uh, you know, alliance. Yeah, I think that's the idea behind intersectionality is just um, everything that represents white supremacy is what we're against. And if that means putting ourselves at odds with um, empirical evidence and Aristotelian logic, so be it. And uh, I just don't think that's a good road to go down to go down collectively. I think we're going to wind up with too many emperor's new clothes moments if we go down that road. And we're going to wind up where our, what formally would have been negotiated in the political sphere will be power struggles negotiated elsewhere from politics. And that's a, it's a dark vision. And it's interesting that race issues are often said to be so complicated. And yeah. I don't, I don't really think they are that complicated. I think that we're just I don't either. trained to pretend. You mean compared this, to this? It's, this is complicated. Yeah. These are very rich issues. And I am, I have no patience whatsoever for the person who decides that having the discussion and bringing up these questions is transphobic. That's utterly anti-empirical. It, it makes no sense and it serves no purpose. But I do not see easy answers here. This is very complicated. Mark, you, you want, you're proposing that an awful lot of people are mentally imbalanced. And I don't know where that line is drawn. It's counterintuitive to me, though, because it's so many people. But I don't know where one of the complexities is, where do you draw that line? And history has often presented that, that issue. This is fascinating to me, but I yeah, should say it's that. It's difficult because you don't want to, you know, I don't have a book. I, <laughs> I'm sitting at Linda's house. I do not have a copy of my book. But we book. just happen to have one in hand. Yeah, that, this that's book. the book, yeah, everybody. I'm still not crazy about the cover, but yeah, I'll live with it. <laughs> the, um, yeah, it's, you don't want to over-medicalize these situations. You don't want to say transgender people are crazy because they're functional. They're, they're nice they're, and they deserve to live respect they deserve to be respected in the way they present themselves and the way they identify. It's just asking other people to acknowledge as true what's demonstrably not true is a bridge too far. I, I have what might be a final question. John's in the chair, but let me let me just ask it quickly. Go ahead, Glenn. Because I know what many will say. They will say that you are a dangerous man, Mark Goldblatt, and that oh, and that your yeah. arguments actually are uh, in, inducing violence, that, that the, they're, they're an assault on the very integrity of the being of people. Uh, they will be used by uh, know-nothings to you know, justify their uh, rejection of those people. And I just want to give you an opportunity to yeah. respond to this predictable criticism. Well, if my... If my arguments are used to discriminate against anyone, then the person who's doing the discriminating is misunderstanding the argument I'm making. Um, where I can see a legit concern, I, you know, and, you know, my book, it talks about critical race theory and the Me Too movement as well as transgenderism where I can see a, a kind of sliver of truth in that what I'm saying is disagreeable would be insofar as it doesn't allow people their own truths. You know, it, if you believe that people should be allowed their own truths, if you, to my mind, you're vitiating the notion of truth if you do that. But if you want to say that it is a natural right for me to believe what I want to believe and you have no right to correct me or to point out where my error lies, then I'm 
guilty of that. Um, but I think ultimately, everyone, uh, whether woke or unwoke, is in a better place to respect everybody else if their shared ground is truth. If they, if there is a reality to which they can compare their claims and decide who's right among them, even if those decisions are always tentative, um, we're just all better off because it makes it easier for us to get along. It, it just, I, I don't think that the Enlightenment should be seen as a threat to critical race theorists, to uh, women who are involved in the Me Too movement, or to transgender people. It's just the, the Enlightenment, in fact, is the guarantor of their individual rights. Uh, it's just that the Enlightenment carries with it a burden of rational inquiry and socio-religious tolerance that among the woke, I find a reluctance to extend to people who are skeptical of woke positions. 